We have heard a lot of uh, gobbledygook today about outcome-focused regulatory regimes and uh, reducing business compliance and so forth. But I'm quite sure that if there is anyone listening today uh, to Parliament, they would have no, they'd be none the wiser about what the 341-page bill is about uh, than they were at the outset of the debate. But I thought I would begin by reading the Ministry of Health warning or concerns uh, about a cabinet paper about this bill, uh, and um, I got this under the uh, Official Information Act. The Ministry of Health said, we have a concern that the options that were reviewed and the whole paper on this bill focuses very much on improving business certainty and reducing compliance costs with no discussion on any impact of achieving food safety. It says the cabinet paper makes no mention of the fundamental purpose of food safety, which is to protect human health, has no discussion of the extent of foodborne illness in New Zealand, no discussion of whether the proposed changes are good or bad or neutral for human health, and this is a significant gap in the, bath, in the paper, which should either say the changes will improve the protection of human health, in which case it should say why, or will it make no changes, again, it should give justification, or will it be worse for health, in which case it should include a description of what this might mean in a practical sense in terms of increased risk of foodborne disease and rep increased reputational risk for New Zealand producers. And I think it's very important that we heed the warning of the Ministry of Health about this bill because actually what this bill is, as far as I can deduce, is it's introducing a risk management model to food safety by shifting the responsibility for food safety from the government to the people who produce food so that it won't be, once the bill is passed, it won't be their responsibility, it will be the food producer's responsibility to ensure food is safe uh, and, and they will have to manage all these risks, which sounds fine in theory. But actually, if you look at other countries which have done this, we, and I'm thinking particularly here of America, They've essentially deregulated food safety uh, and to the food industry from the government, and as a result, there have been some quite spectacular uh, public health disasters. So they got rid of their government uh, meat inspectors, for example, and all the meat companies, yeah, they'll provide all their own, no problem there. And anyone who's watched the movie Food, Inc., will recall the massive E. coli poo f uh, food poisonings and deaths that resulted from the inadequate food safety practices in the, com in the companies that were supposed to be guaranteeing that the food was safe under this sort of uh, regime. Now, of particular concern in this context is the fact that in New Zealand we import such vast amounts of imported food. Despite being a food producing nation, we import three and a half billion dollars worth of food each year, including 145,000 tonnes of fruit, 41,000 tonnes of vegetables, 34,000 tonnes of meat, uh, 93, 9.3 thousand tonnes of fish. Of course, we have no idea where all of this ends up because if you went around the entire supermarket with a magnifying glass, you would never find where. It's like a modern detective story. Where might the 34,000 tonnes of meat imported into New Zealand, where might that have ended up in the supermarket? Well, you'll never find out that particular mystery because unlike any other country or any other Western country, we don't have... Uh, we don't have mandatory country of origin labelling, so it can all be, we can't work out uh, which is which. Uh, it is galling, of course, none of this imported food uh, has to meet standards that our domestic growers are expected to meet, uh, which is galling for them, uh, of course, particularly when it, can it be, when it can be passed off as New Zealand food. But the other huge concern is only a tiny fraction of this vast amount of imported food coming into New Zealand is tested at the border. Now, Europe tests 10% of the imported fruit and vegetables, and it rejects 10% of all consignments of imported fruit and vegetables. So what do we test? No one will believe it, but it has been verified uh, in the Primary Production Committee yes, recently, 0.25%. That's how much food we test. 
Uh, and even that is basically just for high-risk uh, high risk items for microbial contamination, things like illegal pesticides, well, we just, uh, we just, we're not worried about those sort of things here. Now, the other thing that is of extraordinary concern in the context of this bill is that we don't even have to import food from countries which have food safety, uh, food, sa food safety regimes in place. We can import it from unregulated countries. Now, I know people won't believe this is true, but if they do what I have done and trawl through the food, New Zealand food safety, they will come across this statement. Not all countries have well-developed domestic food safety regulatory systems, and individual supplier practices can vary. Now, while NZFSA expects importers, where possible, to support food, uh, to source food from supplies that are operating within a regulated environment, if the supplier isn't operating within a regulatory environment, an importer should place more emphasis on asking questions about how food has been produced. Now, what that is is a code or gobbledygook for saying it's perfectly legal in New Zealand to import food from countries which do not have food safety regulations in place. And I might say there's nothing in this bill uh, which seeks to amend that to require that we only import food from countries with regulatory systems in place. So how is transferring the food safety risk to importers from countries without a regulatory system in place going to work? And the other thing is the Minister said we have a rapid response to food risks, but actually let's just have a look at our record. Um, just recently, the end of last year, the Department of, uh, in Texas, the, the State Department of Health there, they found high levels of lead in dried plums imported from China. They immediately issued a recall of all of these. Now, I checked up and found, yes, we import a large amount of dried plums from China. I wondered what the food safety uh, agency might do. Well, what they did was they told importers to check their dried plums to see if they might be affected. End of matter, no recall, no action. And then six months later, wait for it, they released the results of some testing of a small sample of imported plums, I presume from China, that they had tested, and guess what they found? Illegally high, non-compliant levels of lead in them, but still they did nothing. All perfectly safe, they said, six months later. And this, of course, is a typical uh, response, almost a knee-jerk public relations response of the New Zealand food safety regime to downplay the results and ensure consumers there is absolutely no threat to their health. So it is the context of this incredibly slack approach to food safety, particularly the food safety of imported food, that one really does worry. Until recently, they didn't, it, anyone could import uh, food into New Zealand. It was open slather. We didn't even need to know who the importers were. Then they've finally begun to require importers to list their name and address with the Food Safety Authority. And the good thing that this bill will do, it will finally set up a register of importers so governments will know who is importing food into New Zealand and possibly will be able to trace the food back uh, to the source in the event of a food safety regime. But the truth is, despite all of the ministers talking about this outcome-focused regulatory regime and how what, she, what it's true, she said it's going to, what it's all aimed at doing is providing business certainty, reducing compliance costs uh, and so forth, deliver the same level of food safety outcomes at a lower cost. That seems to be the real purpose, to deliver the same level of food safety outcomes at lower cost. The truth is when you consider the context of the slack approach that this government and previous governments have had to food safety, the vast amount of imported produce coming into New Zealand, the infinitesimal amount of testing at the border, the fact that we can import food from countries which don't even have regulatory uh, regimes in place, the fact that until now we haven't even known uh, where that, uh, who has been importing our food, I'm afraid to say uh, that we are not 
uh, we're not confident that this is really going to be uh, what so many people have said. It's the great leap forward in terms of food safety in New, New Zealand. It's 340 pages. We will uh, approve this to select committee. Uh, I can assure them that I will be asking many questions and seeking to try to figure out whether any of this vast 341 pages uh, of, uh, of legislation will